Okay, uh, what do we have on the menu today then? Hmm. It uh, looks like more Ryzen content. Ryzen buying guide. Which processor should you buy? Just buy whichever processor you can afford. Okay, so you want to know what to buy. Fair enough, I suppose we should probably work it out then. Thankfully, I have done a bit of the groundwork already, as last week we checked out the Ryzen 5 1400 quad core, as well as the 1600 six core. In the end, that comparison boiled down to just $50, and when comparing the two processors side by side, that does see the 1600 priced 30% higher. However, as noted towards the end of that video, if we do look at the price comparison a little more realistically, it's actually not nearly that much. Again, the cheapest B350 boards start at around $70 US, and just factoring that in means the 1600 is now just 20% more expensive. Throw in some memory and now the premium is even less. In the end, once you factor in the total system cost, $50 could account for just a 5% price increase. So looking at it that way, the 1600 seems like the obvious choice. However, as noted in that video, I was still yet to account for the even more expensive 8-core Ryzen 7 1700. The 8-core monster costs $310 US right now, and that makes it around 40% more expensive than the 1600. That's obviously a more significant margin, especially since you are only getting 33% more cores. That said, is it worth investing in the 8-core model? And if you do, what are the benefits? Well, to answer that, I have compared all three of the non-X Ryzen CPUs in a range of applications and games to see where they stand. Please note that once again, I am using a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti graphics card for benchmarking. This is done to try and remove the GPU as the performance limiting factor. In my opinion, high-end GPUs are a good indicator of future gaming performance. That said though, I often do create content that will feature lower end GPUs and typically they're intended to answer a specific question. This though isn't one of those videos. Truth of the matter is, if I was to test with say the RX 580 for example, then for 90% of the games out there, there would simply be little to no difference between the 1400 and 1700. So just be aware of that. Now if you want to know how these three CPUs will compare once games become more demanding and graphics cards grow more powerful, then the GTX 1080 Ti will tell us all we need to know. With that, let's jump into the benchmarks. First up, I checked out memory bandwidth performance, and here we find that the 1700 is good for almost 38 gigabytes per second, as was the case with the 1600. That's a very healthy memory bandwidth for a dual channel configuration. Cinebench R15 shows us just how much faster the 1700 is than the 1600, assuming you can utilize those additional cores. Out of the box, the 1700 is 25% faster, while it extends that lead to 30% once both CPUs are overclocked to 4 GHz. Clock for clock, the 1700 also outscores the 1400 by an impressive 102% margin. The Excel results are quite interesting, and it does seem like 6 cores is the optimal amount for this application. We have seen Excel scale well with up to 20 cores in the past, but for some reason here the 1700 doesn't offer that much of a performance improvement over the 1600. Overclocked, the 1700 was just 11% faster, which is again a surprising find. 7-Zip on the other hand scales very well with extra cores. Here we see that the 1600 is 50% faster than the 1400, which makes sense given it has 50% more cores. That said though, the 1700 was just 32% faster than the 1600 for the decompression test and just 12% faster for the compression test. So while faster than the 1600, the 6-core model looks to deliver the best bang for your buck in this test. Premiere Pro doesn't really take advantage of more than 6 cores that well. Whereas the 1600 was 36% faster than the 1400, the 1700 is just 13% faster than the 1600 when comparing all three CPUs clocked at 4 GHz. So then, even content creators like myself will get the most bang for their buck with the 1600. For measuring power consumption, I have used Premiere Pro, which in hindsight might not have been the best move given the application doesn't properly utilize the 8-core CPU. That said, we do still see an increase in consumption with the 8-core CPU, particularly once overclocked. Clock for clock consumption increased by 14%, which is very close to the 13% boost in performance seen when moving from the 1600 to the 1700. Okay, so first up we have Battlefield 1, and here the 1700 and 1600 are virtually identical, even with the GTX 1080 Ti handling the rendering work. Although the 1600 was able to deliver 22% more frames than the 1400, the 1700 was able to improve upon that result. The 0.1% figure is a few frames better, 
but certainly not anything to get overly excited about. Mafia 3 loves them cores, and we see this once again. Clock for Clock for 1700 was 9% faster when looking at not just the average, but also the 0.1% results. Not exactly a mind-blowing result, I'll admit, but at least the 8-core 1700 was able to offer some kind of a performance advantage here. That said, though, the step from the 1400 to the 1600 did net us an extra 18% performance, which was much more significant. Ashes of the Singularity Escalation is another core-hungry game, and yet once again we see the 1700 offering little advantage over the 1600. With just a few frames in it, the 8-core processor certainly isn't worth the premium over the 6-core model when gaming. That said, though, I am keen to retest DirectX 12 titles such as Ashes once Vega arrives. Next up we have Hitman, and it's another hit job on the 8-core 1700. Granted, the 1700 doesn't require any overclocking to get the most out of the GTX 1080 Ti, but still, once match clock for clock with the 1600, there's nothing in it. Unsurprisingly, Deus Ex Mankind Divided isn't able to provide the 1700 with an advantage over the 1600. Both CPUs allow the GTX 1080 Ti to churn out the exact same numbers. Not much more needs to be said, or really can be said on this one. We have a dead heat here. Finally, Total War Warhammer, and damn it, another tie between the 1700 and 1600. Again, not a lot can be said here. Both the 1700 and 1600 averaged 136 FPS once overclocked. Interestingly, out of the box, the 1600 was actually faster than the 1700. Clearly, it's managing to hit higher operating frequencies. Anyway, that wraps up the testing. Okay, so this little comparison actually sums up Ryzen really well in my opinion, and it illustrates exactly what I have been saying since the Ryzen 5 series was first released. For me, the Ryzen 5 release was much more impressive than Ryzen 7, though that isn't to say there's anything wrong with the Ryzen 7 series. The problem rather being that there are a few mainstream applications that really take advantage of an 8-core 16-thread CPU, and really those that do are incredibly fast on a 6-core or even 4-core processor anyway. There's definitely a need and demand for 8-core CPUs, and those with even more cores, but that demand isn't coming from the mainstream market, because, as I said, most software simply doesn't take advantage of that many cores. It's no secret that Harbour Unboxed is primarily a gaming-focused channel, and right now games simply don't require 8 cores, and this likely will be the case for some time to come. Nonetheless, the 8-core Ryzen 7 1700 is an incredible buy at just $310 US, particularly given the alternative, which is the grossly overpriced Core i7 6900K at $1050 US. The only issue being, what do you do with all those cores? If occupying 8 cores is beyond you right now, then I suggest turning to the golden chip of the Ryzen lineup, the R5 1600. All gamers will right now find the 1600 to deliver the maximum bang for their buck, and let's take a closer look at what I mean. Be aware that I'm comparing the minimum frame rate data here, and that figure is used to divide against the CPU's total cost to give us the cost per frame. Here we see that in terms of value from a gamer's perspective, the 1400 and 1600 are very evenly matched. Bang for your buck, they are much the same. The 1600 just allows for a little extra performance and will likely serve you better down the track. Comparing the 1600 and 1700, we find that the 8-core model costs almost 40% more while it delivered virtually the same performance. This isn't to say the Ryzen 7 series is poor value or that the 1700 isn't as good as the 1600. They are the same physical chip after all. The 1700 simply has all the cores enabled, and for that you're stung a 40% premium. For those building a new system from scratch, the Ryzen 5 1600 is the way to go in my opinion. Realistically, I would say consumers are looking at spending around $600 to $700 US on a new rig, minus the CPU. That allows for a decent motherboard, 256GB SSD, 16GB of memory, a mid-range graphics card, and all the other essentials. Throw in the Ryzen 5 1400 and the total bill comes out at around $800. Whereas if you use the 1600, it comes in at about $850 and that's just 6% more, and that in my opinion makes the 1600 an obvious choice and a worthwhile upgrade. The step up to the 1700 will add around another 10% to the cost of the total build, which takes the price to $950, which honestly is still very reasonable. That said, for gamers, you are throwing another $100 US at a component that, let's be honest, isn't really going to net you any extra performance, at least right now and probably for the foreseeable. If you took that money and reinvested it into a GPU, that would indeed deliver a noticeable performance improvement, for gamers of course. Uh, another option would be to grab an NVMe SSD. That might not boost gaming performance, but it will make the system on a whole that little bit snappier. 
Anyway, I'm gonna recommend the Ryzen 5 1600 as the CPU to get, especially if you are a gamer. But of course, I would like to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments section below. I'm always keen to hear, or rather read your thoughts. Yes, I can read thoughts now, so be careful. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.